Welcome to our What is Truth series, and this week's question, Do you feel like a winner? On February the 7th, the 2014 Olympic Games officially began. Almost 3,000 athletes have journeyed to Sochi, Russia to compete in various sporting events. Thousands of spectators will watch them compete, with millions more watching on television or the internet. History tells us the first Olympic Games were probably held about 700 BC in Olympia, Greece. In recent times, the Olympics have been held every two years, rotating between summer and winter. Athletes train almost on a daily basis with the hope of perfecting their skills sufficiently to compete on this world stage. Once they are qualified to represent their country at the Olympics, their focus then turns to winning. Athletes compete with the dream of winning a gold medal the ultimate prize after years of vigorous training and dedication to their sport. Recognizing the importance of mental preparation, many athletes now use sports psychologists to help them develop a winning attitude. Physical training may not be enough, and athletes are told that to compete at their highest level, they must feel like a winner. It would seem likely that some form of the Olympic Games were active during New Testament times. The Apostle Paul, on several occasions, compared the spir spiritual aspect of life to that of sporting events such as the Olympics. The games were probably just as popular as they are today, and people listening or reading Paul's words could understand his comparison. Perhaps the most familiar scripture verses that make this comparison is found in 1 Corinthians 9, 24-27, where we read, do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get that prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Paul is telling us, as Christians, the importance of doing our absolute best in living our life for Jesus Christ. Our daily walk with God can be compared with an athlete training for his big day at the Olympics. While they would physically and mentally train for that day, we as Christians must train spiritually always ensuring we are living a life pleasing to God. Eugene Peterson, in his message translation of these verses I just read, describes it this way. You've all been to the stadium and seen the athletes race. Everyone runs, one wins. Run to win. All good athletes train hard. They do it for a gold medal that tarnishes and fades. You're after one that's gold eternally. I don't know about you, but I'm running hard for the finish line. I'm giving it everything I've got. No sloppy living for me. I'm staying alert and in top condition. I'm not going to get caught napping, telling everyone else about it, and then missing out on it myself. Most of us have watched proudly as one of our country's athletes stepped on the podium to accept their gold medal. We've seen the excitement in their face, seen their parents trying to hold back tears as they watched their son or daughter claim the ultimate prize for which they had persevered so long and hard to gain. Eugene Peterson reminds us that such a prize will eventually tarnish and fade. However, he tells us, as followers of Jesus Christ, we have the hope and promise that if we persevere in living our life in obedience to God, our prize will be eternal and will never tarnish and fade. The Apostle Paul describes it as a crown that will last forever. The Bible describes other crowns that await the victorious Christian, such as the crown of righteousness, 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8, the crown of life, Revelation 2 and 10, the crown of joy, Philippians 4 and 1, and the crown of glory, 1 Peter 5 and 4. Are you running the race that one day will lead to victory as you stand before Jesus Christ? Do you look forward to hearing Jesus say, well done, good and faithful servant? Do you feel like a winner? In conclusion, I leave you with Paul's words in Philippians 3, 
13 and 14. Forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus.